But for now, let's turn to the pressure which is piling onto the Prime Minister. Tory critics have warned that Rishi Sunak has just six weeks left to turn the party's electoral fortunes around before even more Tory MPs publicise their discontent. Well, joining me now to discuss this is Bob Seeley. He was a Conservative MP for the Isle of Wight. Bob, thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. So six weeks till doomsday, if you believe the papers today. No, I don't. It's absolute rubbish. OK, care to elaborate on why you think it's rubbish? Two by-elections yeah, and look, budget uh, coming the up? Telegraph, the, the Telegraph is, is trying to fan discontent. Um, I, I don't know why. They've obviously got an agenda. Um, one MP came out in uh, opposition to Rishi this week, Simon Clark. And if I want to find an MP comes out in, in opposition to Keir Starmer, I can probably quite, find quite a few. Uh, uh, Simon came out this week, said he wasn't happy. And actually, the one thing to Simon's credit that he has done, I think it was an incredibly stupid thing for him to do and a very foolish thing for him to do, because basically nobody's gone with him. And the one thing that it has happened is, uh, is remind all of us of the importance of unity. And I'm very much hoping that what you're going to see, and look, I was out in Cowes last week in my constituency, people want unity. People say, get your act together. We want a unified Conservative Party. And I think increasingly what you're going to find is a unified Conservative Party, and we'll be pushing, we'll be putting the Labour Party under pressure. And let's see how un united the Labour Party is, because right now they, they don't have much of a plan for anything. So actually, I, I'm, I really regret Simon's actions. I think they're incredibly stupid. But you'll notice not a single person came out with him, and quite the opposite. About 350 of us said, put a sock in it, mate. It's interesting, Bob, um, how these attacks seem to be coming from the Daily Telegraph, always been the true blue Bible. And there was that polling early this week. And what are they trying to do there? They're basically saying that unless Sunak goes, the party is heading for electoral oblivion and a mythical, more conservative leader is required to turn things around, although they don't name who that is. Do you think the Telegraph is turning on the Tories? Well, maybe, Martin, but actually, I think you've summed it up really well there, and congratulations. It is mythical. The idea that you can change leaders every so often and people are going to say, yeah, crack on. It's just fantasy. It's magical thinking and not in a good way. So uh, what we need to do, look, some people aren't happy with Rishi. I didn't support Rishi, actually. I supported Penny and then Liz. But actually, Rishi's done a cracking job, and we owe him our support. Yeah, we're getting inflation down. We're growing the economy, especially compared to the rest of the Europe. We've had figures out from the Treasury yesterday that shows the economy has grown more faster. It's up 23, 24% since 2010, better than most other major economies in the European Union. So actually, we're doing really well. Martin, we've got a great record on the environment, on carbon emissions, on schooling, when it comes to the phonics system, when it comes to free schools, when it comes to academies. We've got a great record. We've got to keep reminding people of what a good record we have. And actually, we don't want to throw that away uh, under Keir Starmer's leadership, going back to square one with a party that doesn't, after 14 years in opposition, still doesn't need, um, seem to understand or know what it stands for. Now, Bob, of course, an acid test of people's appetite is by-elections, and you've got two of those fellas coming up on February the 15th. A poll yeah. out today, interestingly, putting reform on 13%. The Tories now on 20%. The Reform Party mm -hmm. are standing in both of those by-elections. Are you expecting them to cause any damage to the Tories? Look, I think there's a very simple message. And again, by-elections tend to be places where there are protest votes. I personally think that the case against um, Peter Bowen was pretty unjust, actually. 86% of his constituents didn't vote for to get rid of him, and only 14% did. So I, I'm not quite sure in what way that counts as democracy. I thought he was a good MP. I think these allegations against him were extremely old. Okay, I haven't read the report. Um, but when 14% of people want to get rid of you, that's 86% who don't. I would just say this. There's a very simple message for anyone who wants to vote reform. If you vote reform, you're almost certainly not going to elect a reform um, a member of parliament. But what you will do is make it much, much more likely that we'll end up with a Labour member of parliament or a Liberal member of parliament for wherever it is you live. And if that happens across the UK, even 5 or 10% vote for reform. And yeah, don't get me wrong, I like Richard Chice, the Tice, but he ain't going to be prime minister. He's probably never going to be a member of parliament. All you're doing is letting Labour in for longer. Now, most people who vote re reform voting reform because they love their country, they're fed up with woke, they want to get stuff done on legal and illegal immigration, 
and we need to improve legal immigration. And we're doing our best to deal with illegal immigration. So we get the fact that why people want to re support, support reform. But if you're going to support reform, you're going to end up with Labour or the Lib Dems, and they're both as bad as each other. So people have got to think about that as the year goes on and we get nearer a general election. A vote for reform is a vote for the left-wing parties and the unpatriotic left-wing parties that reformed voters above all despise. OK, Bob Seedy, Conservative MP for the Isle of Wight. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure.